There are a lot of things we use or consume every day, without really knowing how they are made. For example, do you know where tissues come from, how the jeans you wear are made, or what the bristles on your toothbrush are made of? That's what we're going to find out in today's video. So, make yourself comfortable because here are 7 things you use every day without knowing how they are made. Let's get started. Did you know that the word, scotch, a common name for adhesive tape, is actually an American brand that appeared in 1930? Scotch, or adhesive tape, whatever it's called, is one of the most widely used products in everyday life. As everyone knows, this product is mainly used to put two or more things together by sticking them together. But I'm pretty sure you don't know how this almost indispensable product is made. Have you ever wondered how the adhesive tape is rolled up, how the glue is added that will give it its main characteristic, and of course, how one does not stick one's fingers together during its manufacture? Well, we will answer all these questions, but as you can already imagine, there is nothing simple about the manufacture of adhesive tape. In fact, it is very complex and can be done in different ways. We're going to talk about one of the classic methods, which starts with the production of the adhesive substance using a chemical process where the components of the adhesive are mixed together. Once prepared, the adhesive is then applied thinly to the substrate, which is usually plastic. This application is done with an organic solvent or water. The substrate then passes through a drying tunnel. The solvent is evaporated and the adhesive is firmly bonded to the substrate. Of course, the product coming out of the machine does not yet have the shape of long narrow strips. Rather, they are wide strips that are wound up by a large, wide roll, then coated and dried if necessary, before being wound up again in their entirety. Finally, the rolls are cut in another machine into several smaller rolls before being packaged. The history of jeans dates back to the end of the 19th century when they were worn by men as work clothing, especially by cowboys who chose them for their sturdiness and comfort. It is said that the first jeans were made from a special fabric called Nimes fabric. So, you can understand where the word denim comes from, the fabric used to make jeans. This fabric would have been used at the time by a certain Levi Strauss. From that time to the present day, jeans have not aged a day. Today it is one of the most worn garments in the world, and it is very common to find them in every shop. But what you may not know is that jeans have a long way to go before they are worn. In fact, its manufacture goes through several stages that begin with the picking of the cotton. It is estimated that about 600 grams of cotton are needed to make a single pair of jeans. This cotton is then sorted, cleaned, and worked to obtain the basic fiber that will give the cotton thread. Time for color now. The yarn spools are soaked in indigo dye, the color of the famous jean, and then air dried before being woven into the fabric. The denim fabric is made from a slightly irregular mesh of white and blue yarn that gives the jeans their very specific look. All that remains to be done is to cut out the different pieces that will make up the jeans. By the way, it takes about 10 pieces for a pair of trousers. These pieces are then assembled and sewn together, before adding the buttons, zipper, and other elements necessary for the finishing touches. That's it. All that's left to do is iron the garment to flatten the seams, then wash it to soften it and give it a nice patina, that is to say, the color it will take with time. It was in 1924 that the American company Kimberly Clark invented makeup remover wipes intended mainly for Hollywood stars. But one fine day in 1929, when Ernst Mahler, Kimberly Clark's director at the time, blew his nose into a wipe, he had just discovered a new use for it. The disposable handkerchief was born, and with it, the brand name Kleenex, which would later become a generic name used to designate this product that came to us from America and which over the years replaced the famous tissue. Whether in a case or in a box, tissues are now part of everyday products that nobody can do without. They are practical and hygienic and can be used Used anywhere, but do you know how the famous Kleenex is made? To produce this tissue, it requires a tons of pulp, a raw material made from wood cellulose, especially from hardwood trees such as birch, are used to make these tissues. This pulp is then diluted in warm water. The mixture, which is spread out over several meters long and a few meters wide, is then dried after being passed between cylinders heated at a very high temperature, resulting in a kind of ribbon with a very small thickness. This ribbon is then rolled before being cut into pieces with high precision saws to obtain perfect, unraveled edges. Then the pieces will be assembled in layers to form the future handkerchief. The tissue is then folded and put into boxes or plastic cases, printed or sprayed with lotion if necessary. 
Did you ladies know that lipstick has been around for a long, long time, long before the birth of Jesus Christ? In the past, women, especially the noblest among them, used fats mixed with natural pigments or a mixture of plants or crushed semi-precious stones to color their lips. Of course, all this has changed. But do you know how the lipstick you use today is made? Well, in case you don't know, it's not just a mixture of pigments and solvents, but your favorite makeup product is made up of many ingredients and goes through long steps before it lands in your makeup kit. Generally speaking, lipsticks contain ingredients to beautify the lips, moisturize them and ensure a long-lasting hold. Indeed, they are made up of oils, perfumes, wax, or silicone to provide the right consistency, without forgetting the preservatives necessary to preserve them for a long time and avoid their degradation. Powdered pigments are dispersed in a mixture of heated oils and melted waxes. Once the mixture has cooled slightly, the other ingredients are added. The final mixture is then poured into the molds and cooled until it is completely solidified. That's it. The lipstick sticks are ready. Who among us doesn't know the famous Kinder Surprise, the chocolate eggs with a toy inside? These treats are enjoyed by children and adults alike. You may not know it, but Kinder Chocolate Eggs are a product of the Italian confectioner Ferrero and were invented in 1973. But the question you may be asking yourself is, how are the little toys placed inside the eggs? To answer this question, you have to follow the production steps of this confectionery, we are talking about the classic chocolate eggs that we know so well. To begin with, the milk chocolate is poured into half-egg molds which are then emptied of excess chocolate to leave only an outer layer. Once it has solidified, another layer of white chocolate is added using the same process. The third step consists of placing the famous yellow capsule containing the little toy inside a half-egg, before assembling the latter with a second one and cooling the whole egg until it is completely hardened. Voila, a delicious, ready-to-eat kinder surprise. Before we continue, here's the question of the day. Who do you think invented the telephone? Option A. Alexander Fleming. Option B. Alexander Dumas. Option C. Alexander Graham Bell. Think carefully, choose the option you think is correct and stay until the end of this video to see if you answered correctly. You may never have wondered about the origin of the toothbrush, yet you use it every day. Well, let's give you some information about this essential little accessory for your teeth hygiene. But first, it is worth remembering that the first toothbrush appeared during the 15th century thanks to the Chinese, whereas before, people used to clean their teeth by generally using plants. Of course, the first toothbrushes were nothing like the ones we use today. The handle was made of vermeil while the natural bristles were made of dot pig or boar bristles. Except that these bristles were very hard and hurt the gums, so they were replaced by slightly softer bristles from other animals such as horses. But no matter which animal they came from, these natural hairs did not ensure good dental hygiene because the hairs looked like mini-tubes with a very small diameter, which allowed bacteria to grow easily. The natural hairs were therefore replaced by synthetic hairs made of a material invented in 1937, nylon. Initially rigid, nylon bristles were reworked from the 1950s onwards and softened to become finer and ensure gentle cleaning of the teeth without damaging the gums. The nature of these synthetic bristles and their flexibility is determined during the manufacture of toothbrushes. Once stacked, the toothbrushes are then clipped. This operation will determine the flexibility of the bristles. The more the bristles are trimmed, the harder they are. After the shearing, it will only remain to round them so that they do not irritate the oral mucous membranes. When it's hot, what better way to cool off than with a good ice cream stick? But, do you know how these sticks are made that everyone loves? Take Magnum ice cream, for example. These chocolate-coated vanilla ice creams are of course made industrially. It takes place entirely in the factory, where machines ensure the production of the ice cream from start to finish. Once the ice cream has been prepared, it goes through a machine that will give it its Eskimo shape. These Eskimos, which have a temperature of minus 5 degrees Celsius, will then be sent to a huge freezer that will bring their temperature down to minus 25 degrees Celsius. This step is necessary before moving on to the next one, that of the coating. Indeed, for the coating to be possible, the ice cream must be very cold so that it can withstand the melted chocolate, whose temperature is between 40 and 45 degrees Celsius. This will then allow the chocolate to set quickly, and the stick will have its characteristic chocolate layer. Finally, the sticks are packaged and put in cartons, ready to be delivered to be finally tasted. You've just discovered how seven objects that you use every day are made. Did you already know how some of them are made? Which ones? 
Leave us your answer in the comments, and if you would like to know how other objects that are not on this list are made, let us know. Finally, for the question of the day, the correct answer is option C. The Scottish-born inventor Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone in 1876.